On this Friday's episode, we're doing the front three link suspension. Sponsored by Strikeforce67.ca, the official Canadian home of GoTreads, Canada's professional traction tool. Okay, welcome back to Fab and Adventures, guys. This week here, we're doing the three-link suspension on the Extreme FJ40 here. And I just want to say, with summer rolled around now and some changes in YouTube and whatnot, I'm only going to be putting out videos every other Friday. So... With that said, let's get what we have to do on the FJ. Basically pull the front diff out, take the old shock mounts and stuff off, weld on the new brackets. I've already got them already welded up and uh, figure out what we need for clearances and whatnot. Probably got to knock the old spring hangers off and whatnot. That way I can have this set up with the three link, like the four link is done kind of temporarily. That way I can roll the FJ out of the shop. And if you can see the crate back there, I've got a new 12 by 36 lathe. I'd like to get that set up this week. So that's the plan, get the three link done so I can roll this sucker out of the shop. All right, here's something worth noting. So the, so the TMR universal three link kit is like a combination uh, lower link bracket and upper link bracket that was on like this, but I've been having some problems uh, Just getting the right triangulation the way it was set up was to weld to the inside of the frame and that puts your mounts way too far inward and I don't know it's hard it's hard to explain but What ended up happening is these mounts were in like this but the bar, or I should say the bar was going like this too much and we need it more in line, you know? So if you look at the frame back there, that's actually a steady taper inward. Same with that's a steady taper inward. But from this point on, it is parallel. These two rails are parallel. So the problem was when I, mounted it down there is it was too far inward and to get my outer links brackets on the axles you had a real crazy angle like that and like I said it was making the bar I don't know how to really show it whether you can see it or not but it was making the bar all exaggerated like this instead of more straight with the bucket so what I did was I cut this off on both of them, both sides. The other side just had gussets on there. And I'm gonna set this a little further back, actually on where the taper is. And in instead of the frame rail going here, the frame rail is gonna go here. So it's gonna move the bucket out further and help with that angle. And I tried it out on the passenger side here. Seems to work good. I'll show you that in just a second. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna clamp this to the frame rail. We're gonna tack on the bracket on the outer axle of this Dana 60. And then I've already got the link bar cut. So I'm gonna fit that in there and give it a tack and have a look at it. And then we'll look at having to custom make our own upper link bracket. Let's get after that. All right, we got the lower links in finally, and uh, we'll just have to adjust them to get our axle in here straight. And then we've got the upper tower here that goes on to the axle somewhere here. Not quite sure exactly where it's gonna go, but we'll put it so she has clearance that when it's at full bump, it's not gonna hit the frame rail or anything else.
All right, so these TMR Panhard bar brackets turned out awesome. I mean, they fit perfect, perfectly. And uh, for those of you that maybe don't know what a Panhard bar is, it is a bar that's basically gonna go in here, the heim's gonna go here, it's gonna go across to the other side of the axle and that's what stops the axle from doing any side to side movement because we don't have a triangulated three link, four link up front here. You need something to stop this axle from shifting side to side and that's what a panhard is. So what I'm gonna do is just look down here, make sure it's gonna clear behind the pitman arm not get in the way of anything else. We should be good there and I'm just gonna kind of put a temporary mark where I think I want it to go. And then we'll just throw some tacks in and then once we get the other pan hard bar mounted on the axle then we can build up a bar and kind of have a look and see how it's gonna work and see if there's gonna be anything that gets in the way when the suspension goes through its cycle. So uh, let's tack this one on. Okay, so I had to modify this universal pan hard mount and it used to be level across here, but this frame comes down at an angle. And I, when I got looking at things, you know, when you go to full steer, this shaft or the tie rod is actually gonna move in and out a little bit. So I'm gonna drop this guy down Hopefully, right in front here. And then it's kind of in between the axle and the tie rod. And then hopefully when we have suspension travel up, then even with the tie rod at full turn, it's not gonna touch this, hopefully. So let's just throw a tack or two in here just to hold it. I took the, the axle pan hard bar mount and I had to cut some notches in it to clear this area here of the diff but now it looks like I've got pretty well what I need and the bar the pan hard bar itself is actually going to come across about there that should be pretty darn square so we're going to throw a tack in there and then we're going to make a bar just kind of a temporary bar and uh, see how it works. So let's tack this bad boy in there. Okay, we need to see where our steering rod is gonna go, or our steering arm. So we'll take this guy off. And we got this new trick steering arm from Northwest Fab. Super heavy duty steel, bad boys. Look at that. And that guy will go right on there. And then we'll get an idea of where our, oop, where all our steering is gonna be. All right, so, Getting these pan hard bar and the tie rod arm and whatnot, all the angles finger, figured out properly is, is proving to be quite time consuming and trying to figure out to make sure I'm gonna have enough up travel. I'm planning on about four inches of up travel and uh, this sitting here right now is probably three and a half. And <clears throat> you can see as it sits, if, all is equal my pan hard bar has got 
a bit of a drop down compared to what my steering arm will have. So I'm going to have to drop my bracket on the frame for my pan hard to bring it down because I can't really move this one anymore and I might actually tilt the axle pan hard mount back out a little bit so I got some clearance on the diff here. It's whole, not a whole lot of clearance but it should still clear even at full bump but that's something that we're going to have to see. So we won't weld none of that stuff in solid until we've got a chance to be able to you know, put the jack under here <clears throat> and lift it up and down and cycle the suspension and see just what we have. All right, guys, so we pretty well got the three link done. I just got to do some finish welds on the lower and upper links, and that's about it. I mean, I've got everything all done and I didn't show a lot of it because doing this front suspension and steering and stuff there's a lot of figuring and a lot of cut and move and weld and all that stuff so I just didn't show a lot of it but what I'm gonna do now is I'm just going to come up close show you what I did show you what I had to do show you what I had to modify and uh, let's go after that all right so if you get down low here you can see the pan hard bar is pretty well level and when you put in the imitation or the so said steering arm, they're at perfectly the exact same angle. So that should be awesome. So what you want in a pan hard bar is you want it to stay at the same angle as your drag link. And you definitely want this bar, your pan hard, as level as possible. I mean, if you're already at an angle like this, and when your suspension drops out, you know, your whole axle is on an arc. Your whole axle is held in place on this level by this bar. So if you're already at an angle and then your suspension drops out, I mean, your, your axle's really gonna swing this way, at least this way in little bumps and riding, you know, down the highway and the bumps moving like that, your axle's hardly gonna shift side to side. And that's what you want so you don't get crazy amounts of bump steer and whatnot. So I think this suspension is gonna work awesome. And we're just waiting on the coilovers to show up. I mean, it's a six week wait, so we're just gonna have to wait. Basically where I'm at now, I'm kind of at a standstill. I mean, I could work on the body and do some rust work and whatnot, but I've got a ton of other things I need to get working on around the yard. I gotta do a little work on the jet boat, you know, just a ton of stuff lately in this time of year. I got to take care of. So that is part of the reason why I'm only doing videos every second week. I just don't have time to get everything I need done, done. So let's go around here and I'll show you a few other things. Okay, so you're gonna see the pan hard bar mount here. And this is all pretty well the stock shape of it from TMR. So what I did to make it work, and I still got a little welding to do here, is I had to make a frame piece jut out to drop this down to get my bar level. If I wouldn't have made this frame piece here, this whole bracket would have sat up another two and a half inches higher, and then this arm wouldn't have been on the same level as my drag link. All right, so what we're looking at here is the upper and lower link of the three link, and I opted to do 70% of the length of the lower links. That way uh, your suspension, as it travels through its cycle, it keeps the diff basically level. Now this FJ, we planned right from the beginning that we wanna be able to drive it down the highway lots. And uh, you know, to get the proper suspension geometry for both wheeling and highway, you just, there's no perfect one. So I opted to go it this way, that way it's gonna be great handling on the highway, but when you really make it flex, it's gonna end up being harder on your U-joints. And that's just a trade-off that you're gonna to have to do. And that's what I opted to do. So one of the things with the TMR kit that came, the lower and upper buckets were a one-piece unit. And so that would have kept your links at an equal length, which would be perfect for wheeling. You would, your diff would point up to your transfer case all the time 
and uh, it would be easy on U joints and good flex and whatnot. So I hopefully am not gonna regret that decision to do what I did. So the other problem that I had with the, and it's a universal three link kit from TMR. So, I mean, you're gonna have to modify stuff. So the problem I ran into with where it sat, it actually put these link buckets quite a bit more inboard. And with that inboard, and you, you know, you put your link mount on the axle way out here, your, if you want to call it your bucket was like, was like this, but your rod was coming into it at an angle instead of straight on. So what I did is I cut the upper bucket off and same with this side, I cut the brackets off or the bracing off and I brought the buckets from here down to right underneath the frame, which that put it quite a bit more in line. So now your links have a nice straight shot into the lower bucket and the upper bucket is a beauty straight shot. So, I mean a little modification, but not a big deal. I can't wait to get this bad boy uh, running under its own power and actually get to wheel it. One of the other things I had to do is when you mount this uh, panhard bar mount to the axle, I mean, you only got so, so much room to play here. And I wanted it, you know, the similar length of panhard to your steering arm. And you know, I could have made it a little bit shorter, but uh, what I ended up doing was cutting the steering arm here. And I'm hoping that's not going to cause me issues, but I'll show you why I had to cut it. We'll just turn this wheel if I can. Ah. You see there, I needed clearance for the bracket. So when you turn the full lock, you don't hit. Otherwise it would have hit this bracket here. So we made that change and I think it's going to be fine. So that pretty well completes the four link, three link suspension until my Bilsteins come. Uh, once those come, then I'll be able to make my shock hoops and uh, carry on with the build. So probably a lot of you guys are wondering what's the wheelbase on it. And the wheelbase ended up being 102 inches. I think that's going to be awesome. And it's looking like the way I've got it set up, 37s, 38s, maybe 39s will be as big as I can go before at full lock, you're gonna rub these, uh, the four link bars. I mean, you can adjust the stops on it so you don't turn as sharp, but I would like to have that really sharp steering. It's great in tight trails. So that's where we're at. So stick around. There's a lot more video to come on the Extreme 40 project here and a whole lot of other projects coming up. I got some work on the Samurai to do and I got some work on the jet boat, plus summer ripping on the jet boat and all other wheeling video and whatnot. So if you guys are liking what's going on with this channel and you like the way the Extreme 40 is headed, make sure you subscribe, share these videos, give me a like, give me a thumbs up. If you wanna follow me on Instagram, it's at Fabin underscore adventures. And we'll catch you guys next time.